Thank you, Mr. President. Some folks just don't believe fat meat is greasy. It's like an I told you so. 16 members of our caucus said it. Silence makes you complicit when you sit on the sidelines in the face of injustice. Colleagues, sometimes I hear points of view from across the aisle that make me laugh in horror at entitled ideology or laugh from ridiculousness. Other times I hear different perspective that challenges me to think. And doing so, I have to put in another perspective. However, over the past year, especially the last few weeks, I've been befuddled by the exchange of nonsense in the chamber. So I'm going to try and touch several topics real quick, rather than come up here every day and touch on each. I know every now and then my hometown can truly be Detroit versus everybody. But over the last few years, Detroit hasn't been fighting anybody. So the excuse or explicit bias shown should be gone. And yet it says a lot about many of you getting up, trying to whip up or blame my home, challenge social justice, or who's getting the vaccine. First, all of you wanted to ignore the virus in silence, overthrow the governor at every turn with no solutions based in any reality. You condone thugs running amok through our hollowed halls here at the Capitol in silence. Build a wall around the Negroes in Detroit while black people were still dying at a faster rate all over the state and in some of your own districts where you refuse to release federal dollars until today like it's your own money. Or is that what you want, the Thanos theory? Now you want equity. You, you want equality. You want to denounce the social equity index, disparaging social engineering as a bad thing when the colored folks get some service, or social engineering only when good things, when the white race wins. Social engineering is redlining the black community into generational poverty. Social engineering is depriving equitable funding to disadvantaged students in black school districts like Detroit, Flint, Saginaw, Benton Harbor. Social engineering is racial profiling. Social engineering is killing black men for simply being black. One of you got up and demanded the governor open the state and let the adults be adults. Those same adults put on a minstrel show on the Capitol steps. Those same adults arrested a black man for collecting petition signatures. Those same adults called the police on me, a suspicious senator, for campaigning with a young black man to suppress the vote in St. Joseph and silence. Those same adults come to both chambers, committees, and super spreader events not wearing masks during a national, no, a global pandemic, so stop blaming the governor for an act of nature that has devastated the country and the world. Just stop it. Hell, several of you contracted the virus, but tried to keep it a secret despite your own negligence. Next, stop saying black people can't count. Stop saying black people in Detroit or Wayne County or anywhere can't count or dead people voted. Stop this divisive message of election improprieties and just tell your district the truth. If you believe the ex election was riddled with fraud, we have to recheck your elections. Those cycles had more discrepancies than the 20 election, and we can make a case that you are here to do fraud. Stop playing budget hostage games, then saying open up the state. You know without it, we can't open safely. Test our seniors, assisted living sites, or so people can visit loved ones, or continue to let them play sports safely without proper testing to participate. Now the speaker on Let Them Play made some eloquent points on why sports is vital to the mental health and development of our children. Yet he and many of his colleagues continue to vote to cut funding in the black community's educational system on the schools can't afford to play sports, have music or art. Or is this philosophy just for the white kids or the white kids who can afford to play? So as I hear all these calls for unity, these calls for common sense, the calls for healing, all things my caucus have called for daily for a year, stop these stories of a season of hardship and oppression due to a plague. While the governor is saving lives, many of you in this legislature and your predecessors have implemented laws that continue a legacy of disenfranchising and pose a hardship to the black and brown communities that we have endured for over 450 seasons, and I don't see you fighting to make that right. So if you want to move forward, quit being silent when your own colleagues are inappropriate. If you want to he heal as a legislature, then quit being complicit. Just stop. And for the record, the people voted for the governor, Whitmer, and I'm gone.